Hello guys, this is AfriPost. I hope wherever you're watching us from, you're having a great time. You know, many a times as Africans, we've really wondered where we shall get funds to develop our continent because much of our development agenda is funded by Western countries. And until recently, we've seen countries like China and Russia coming to the help of Africa. But one thing that is always overlooked is the fact that there is a sense in which Africans in the diaspora or even African Americans can work towards the betterment of Africa because many of these countries that come to aid of Africa, they send us aid, they can lend us money, they can sign with us deals, bilateral deals that are aimed at developing for us certain infrastructure. But these deals do not come free. They come at a very great expense. Most of these countries have come and they are exploiting our natural resources. As you know, Africa is endowed by many, many valuable mineral resources. And therefore, everybody, every Western nation would want to be engaged with Africa. But can we really think of a way through which Africans can develop Africa by themselves? I want us to watch this video where the question of development in Africa and owning Africa's development was discussed by black community. Kindly watch. I was doing some research earlier, right? And um, I was looking at the total population of Texas, Georgia, and Louisiana. 45 million people. The GDP combined of Texas, Georgia, and Louisiana is 2.6 trillion. Africa, 1.3 billion people. The GDP of Africa is 2.7 trillion. So three states in North America have got as much GDP as the entire 54 countries in Africa combined. And that's because most everybody who's going into Africa doing anything are stealing. They ain't putting anything back in there. I was Googling um, Congo. Congo, 100 million people. The GDP of Congo is 50 billion, right? People in Congo right now are on less than $500 annually each. So I've seen people there starving to death while 10.5 billion of um, cobalt is being taken out of the country every single year. There's 12 billion being taken out of just copper every single year. Then there's 2 billion of diamonds gold, wolframite, tungsten, all of these things are being taken out and nothing's being put back. That's why there's 22 million people right now in Congo who are starving. There's six million people in Congo right now who are displaced. I'm there, I'm working there, and I'm seeing all this stuff happen, and I'm like, I know if my brothers and sisters in the Americas, I know if my brothers and sisters, black brothers and sisters in, in Europe were to come over here, they wouldn't be doing that shit. Like, I know that. I know that you wouldn't go over there and rob from people. I know you would go and build with people. And that's the kind of trade relationship that needs to be fostered between us. Because if we are not going to do for ourselves amongst ourselves, then we are going to die and we're going to be dancing while we're doing it. Right? I don't know if anybody's seen the shocking and jiving and all of this stuff that people be doing, but it's like, for whatever reason, we acting like it's all good, at the same time as I've been through Atlanta and I've seen people starving on the street corners, right? And a lot of the people who are starving on the street corners don't even get to come to events like this, right? So what are we doing? If, if you look at uh, um, America and then if you look at black America as a parent, what are we doing for the children? How are we treating the orphan children? How are we treating the children in group homes? How are we tre treating the children in poverty? And then how are we treating the children in the rest of the world? It seems like our parents ain't doing a very good job, right? Because actually the parents of black people in this country right now is white America, right? And you see what white America be doing to black people, right? But it's not just white America. You see what Indians do, Koreans do, and every other ethnic group disrespect us at every single opportunity that they get. And what do we do? We go out, we march, we say we're gonna overcome, we hope that change is gonna happen. And I'm like, I'm seeing, when I was in, um, during the lockdown, I was in Thailand, and I was watching all this stuff happening, and I was seeing this whole hands up, don't shoot thing, hands up, don't shoot, and I was, and there was, I was like, what is this? And there was, oh, this is Black Lives Matter. And I was like, oh, okay. What about Black Liberation Movement? What about strap up, you're allowed guns here. Why are you begging your oppressor to stop? I don't understand this. How many people have you got here that's been in the military and know how to shoot people? So why are you begging your oppressor to stop shooting you? Right, 
Like, let's get back to the Black Panthers. I see you got the Panthers on the back of there. Let's get back to the Black Panthers. You need to, hands up, don't shoot. You need to strap up and shoot back. That's what I've been saying to everybody. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. And Malcolm X said that self-defense is just common sense. But everybody's out here waiting for, for a savior or a messiah to come and get them. No messiah is going to come. It's only we that have us, right? And the same thing that's happening in Africa is happening all over the black world. Brazilians are catching hell. There's 160 million Brazilians right now. And when there was like around seven or 800 people being killed here in 2019 by the police, in Rio alone, one city, there was 1,000 people killed that same, that same year, right? So whether we're in Brazil, whether we're, we're in Israel, whether we're in South Africa, whether you're in Arkansas, or whether you're in Chicago, black people catching hell everywhere, right? So they're catch, we catching hell everywhere. So right now on this stage and in this group, anytime you see the diaspora wars, or you see this, this ADOS, FBA versus Nigeria versus, just shut that shit down straight away and say, we ain't doing that no more. We've moved past that. We work together. Right? Because Nigerians love you just as much as you love them. And all you need to do is get on a plane and go and see it. Because when my brother went to Ghana, he told me after he came back, back from Ghana, he's like, yo, it's amazing here. People love me out here. I've been received well out here. I've been looked after out here. And there ain't no racism out here. Right? So these trade relationships need to be built. And nothing that I'm saying is not common sense. Put it in to your melanin. I have melanin, you have melanin. Let's put it together so we can be mellow. I have a question for the whole audience here because you, you guys might be able to amongst yourselves help yourselves and help us. Mm -hmm. Put your hand up if in here you have a mining operation in Africa. Okay, there's one sister right there. Everybody look at the sister. Everybody look at the sister. We were speaking earlier about who is going to finance the, the movement of stopping gentrification in urban areas in North America. Who's going to finance that? It's not going to be Chase. It's not going to be Bank of America. It's not going to be anybody who's going to finance that apart from ourselves, right? And so I was speaking to this sister, and she, she, she's, she started a mining operation in um, Zambia. And just looking at some of the numbers... We can literally be pulling gold out of the ground and then trading that into dollars, into euros, into whatever. But right now, we're so trying to be heavily invested in uh, real estate, usually European money. We're so heavily invested in entertainment. We're so heavily obsessed with being seen and being the black and brown faces of white capitalism that we can't even see how much value is there amongst ourselves ready to cycle. So we, have, we have now have 27 minutes. I want everybody in here, everybody in here, because everybody in here is accountable to us and we're accountable to you, right? 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 I want everybody in here to right now figure out, you got chat GPT, you got a bunch of other stuff, figure out what a, what a, a, a mining corporation for the black diaspora looks like. Figure that out right now. I want you to start writing a business plan, Put it into chat, chat, BT, chat, chat GPT. Some of you economists in here. How are we going to move wealth and resource to Africa to get raw materials out of Africa, develop them, smelt them, manufacture them in Africa, and get a finished product back over here to develop your, your area? So I want you to all start thinking about that right now. That's some serious game because everybody in here, if you're making money, and you're you know, a black millionaire or a black billionaire, you're usually making money with white folk, right? That's how you're making your money. All of the black billionaires in North America combined is the equivalent wealth to one Nigerian billionaire called Dangote, right? One man in Nigeria. But if you look at the GDP here in Atlanta, just Atlanta, that's half a million people, the GDP in Atlanta is 385 billion. You can Google everything I'm saying. 385 billion. The GDP of ECOWAS, which is 15 Af e uh, West African countries, right, is 800, eight, no, is 400 billion. No, sorry, 800 billion. 800 billion. So just one small city in Atlanta, and those 15 countries are responsible for 400 million people, 
right? So 400 million people in Africa, right, have got the same, uh, have got 50% of the, the, the GDP of just Atlanta, just 500,000. And Atlanta's mainly black, right? I mean, I've been here. Like, I've seen hair and skin and shea butter. I've seen y'all here. So if you guys now are going to really start thinking about how you are going to advance yourselves here, you have to look to Africa because most of the ways that you're making money here are actually the end result of Europeans, Chinese, Indian taking resources out of Africa, manufacturing those resources, right? Creating a, a, a secondary economy and then creating a tertiary economy where they own all the brands, right? You might have some small brands here, but we don't know them in Africa, but we should know them in Africa and you should know African resources here. So that brings me on to my next question. And my next question is, how can we collaborate with the black diaspora and African nations to foster economic partnership and developments between us? I think we have to, you know, find mutual interest, right? Because we always talk about going to Africa, but you're correct, we always skip over, like, who are the people in Africa we go actually connect with? So if you watch high level conversations, you know, we just had a conversation with the brother Freedom out there, right? He's a real estate developer, right? And we was having a conversation with him because I'm like, there's never really been a conversation between the diaspora on a large main platform before, right? Closest we get is like Akon when he does interviews. But we don't actually talk to African people and say, hey, you got money, you got power, what's going on over here? How can we build? So I think first you have to begin the conversation. Most of these places would love if they can increase tourism and bring the skill set, right, that the Americans have over there. Because one thing that we can have of trade, I think a lot of time is, you know, when I went over there to Africa, and especially Ghana, it was the most peaceful I've ever felt in my life, right? And when I looked at, you know, the fact that there's a lot of different cultures, there's a lot of different tribes, but they're connected to these roots. We can't decide on what is culture. Most people think it's hip hop. Hip hop is a lot of times anti-culture, right? Because it's a lot of death culture. Say it. It's about murder, it's about prostitution, it's about sex, it's about violence, Say it. right? Or depression. It's not about safety, peace, joy, rest, calmness, revolution, right? So we're missing a lot of that. And I'm talking about mainstream industry because industry and hip hop is two different things. Like rapping is a skill, but industry is the business of, and oftentimes, when we go over there, they think that's who we are, right? So they going to know 50 Cent faster than they know who Malcolm X is. That's an issue that they know are entertainers but not our revolutionaries. So when we may think that we're walking around with this spirit of bravado and social consciousness and activism that they know us for, but in the reality, they know whoever the latest rapper or ignorance is being imported as an export to them to say this is who you are. So first we have to fix the issues of the black American image and the African image. The continental image, they're still, we don't still see it as a luxurious place, right? So when you go over there, you gotta do documentaries everywhere. You have to show people. There, how many movies has there been about Paris, right? Paris has a brand. Europe has a brand, right? It is connected to a so-called culture. What is the culture? They connect Africans to poverty. Right, so when you're able to see the richness, when you're able to feel like, oh, I can be safe out there, I can have a vibe out there. So I think the first thing is actually building that relationship, right, because the Nigerians out here getting money. You know what I'm saying? Look, Nigerians, look at you with that chain Ni on, man. Nigeria know they carry you know? last. And I think that if we can get them to end the Jalof War, then we could be cool because we can sit down at the <laughs> dinner table. But y'all got to end the Jalof Wars before we can be good with y'all, because y'all be tripping over each other. <laughs> look at, look at, look at, he must be, what you, Ghanaian? Niger I knew it, Nigerians be the loudest, man. <laughs> no, but you know, I think communication first, right? Because you got to come from an empathetic place. We often come in thinking that we about to save everybody, right? We don't need savers, they don't need savers. We just need to do trade with each other, right? There's an opportunity, I can help you, let's build. Social capitalism, make money while doing good. There's so much infrastructure that they need and there's a lot of expertise over here that can help and assist, right? And then there's a lot of things that we can learn from them on the culture side, right? Because we haven't learned how to pass down um, knowledge and information from generations to generations to have these strong family values. 
So I believe that that's the first trade. So yes, you can go out there in real estate, do land, do the gold, help them mine the resources, create these new industries, because it's about institutional creation. That's what we're talking about here. We got the music, right? We got the vibes. They had Uncle Waffles out there, turned everybody up, right? Because they be, they be hitting that. I can't do that, but they be hitting that. You feel me? So I feel like we got, when, when you think about our power as a culture from an influential standpoint, everybody loves us. We love it, right? But when you think of actually having real power, power that you can wield, right? Where you can say that, no, I'm gonna walk through. Like, this is my family. We have power in this industry. What do we represent? So we have more ego, right? Then we have power in our reality. And so we have to stop going for the money and start going for the power, right? Because even when we get money, we don't wield it for power. So you are revolutionary, right? Just because of what you're doing is revolutionary. You are activists because you're activating the people. But how many people coming up to you and say, man, listen, I want to put resources behind you. How they going to respect you over there if we over here not respecting each other? Right? How we not putting media behind it? How we not building up these institutions and saying, man, what Key's doing, I love it. How many people I know are just watch it, bro, I support you. From a distance, yes. You just watching to see if I'm gonna succeed or fail, that's not support. Right, so when somebody stands in front of the people, you gotta stand alongside with them in the front and the back to protect them and have they back. But you can't go to war without money. Right, and so business is warfare. So we have to start having these conversations now, like we got a nonprofit where we're gonna be helping doing free education, giving out textbooks. We need to be able to create these encampments to do rites of passage, right? We need to own the land so that we can build whatever we want on the land. That's the power. But who gonna help us do that? Or we gonna be happy because we got a new millionaire and billionaire, but we don't see no activation from the light they hold. A round of applause. Listen, I was, I was being a little patient back then, so I came out a little angry. But they say anger is a good thing because that means something needs to change. Now, from that discussion, it is evident that Africans in diaspora have a responsibility to really work towards developing Africa. You know, as people were working to really have a better investment, you must understand that Africa provides you with great market for any kind of good that you can have. Africa has large mines of valuable mineral resources. So if you come to Africa, you are coming to a place where you will have a lot of things going on for you. We must also work for creating wealth to develop Africa as it is. Because when we put our businesses in the continent, we are creating wealth for our people. We are creating wealth to have our people grow. Things that they can use and get, and get empowered. If you look at most of the multinational organizations working within African continent, they are not owned by blacks. And this is why white people have a lot of control on what we consume and even what we think. They have a lot of control of the mass media. They control our industries. They control what we consume. They control literally everything in our existence. So blacks are left to be people who just receive. They are just consumers. They cannot create anything new. And that is why Chakabaz and his team are kind of talking and saying that we need to come out and go and rescue Africa. Let us go and put our investments in Africa. Let us go and have things working within the continent because that is the origin of the black skin. Many people might really say that they are not linked to Africa because they are forefathers and ancestors who are not having any link with Africa. But you must understand one thing. Where in this world do you have a majority of people having same skin color as you are? It is in Africa. And therefore, these are your brothers and sisters. Regardless of where your origin comes from, you have a thing that ties you with Africans. So it is very important that as a black person, you take advantage of this opportunity to put your investment where it can bring some positive change to people and also bring change to you as a person. I believe after listening to that clip, we will be empowered and even encouraged to push our investments towards Africa. Here, I'm talking to our brothers in the United States, African-Americans in the United States, blacks living in UK, Russia, China, everywhere, wherever you're located. You are welcomed in Africa to come and put your investment here so that the growth that we have can benefit our people so that we also can get the respect that we deserve. I don't know what you think about this topic. Please, if you're watching us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and also share. Thank you, and may the good Lord bless you. Goodbye.